this week you guys are supposed to view and I have shared with you about four or five days ago a video lecture on chapter four on chapter twelve. That's advanced JavaScript. Okay? And chapter thirteen, advanced JavaScript. And chapter fourteen, which talks about XML and XSL. Very important concepts. We're not going to be using XML for anything. But guess what? X HTML, which is the website that you guys are going to be building, is an HTML page that conforms to the same rules as XML. That it's well formed, that every tag is in lowercase, that every beginning tag has a matching ending tag, and it's a whole set of rules that XML, just watch the video, a whole set of rules that XML must conform to. XHTML is those rules, those XML rules apply to HTML. So you gotta know. You gotta know. We're not gonna use it, but you gotta know. And then I promise I'm going to be covering jQuery. Okay? jQuery. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing for tonight. I am sharing with you guys a book called Apply jQuery Develop and Design. Really cool book. It doesn't go into JavaScript is this, that, and the other. No, it assumes that you already have knowledge of JavaScript, which at this point you should. And it just goes straight into examples. This is how you do it in JavaScript. This is how you do it in jQuery. Right away. In fact, the first two or three pages, it tells you these are the syntax rules for jQuery. Get to know them because that's what you're going to be using the rest of the jQuery library. Okay? <coughs> so please download it. Read. I'm not expecting you to read all of it, but read the basic stuff so you get it. And I am going to navigate through W3 Schools. That's another really cool website that also has a chapter, in fact, a whole section in jQuery. Okay? All right, let's move on. What is jQuery? It's a library. A whole bunch of developers out there said, you know what, JavaScript is just too much, man. It's just a lot of code that you've got to put. It should be simpler. It should be, you know, less code. You should be able to just concatenate stuff and do it in l the least amount of code. And that's exactly what the library does. A whole bunch of developers got together and built in JavaScript a JS file that you download including your HTML and now you can use jQuery. Simple as that. Now there's several versions of it. There's like the full jQuery and there's like the minimum jQuery. And you can download whatever version you want. For most of the widgets that I'm asking you to do using jQuery or JavaScript which is validation date picker or calendar, uh, JavaScript menus, all that stuff, you can use the minimum, the minimum library. Okay? So you go out there and you say download min jQuery. There it is. Download jQuery. Let's go in here. the compressed production, the uncompressed. 
So jQuery is just a JavaScript library. It's a library written in JavaScript. So what's the good deal about it? It greatly simplifies JavaScript programming. Okay, and for those of you who had a chance to do anything in JavaScript in your website, you will understand that. When you do it in jQuery, it's so much easier. And it's easy to learn because guess what? jQuery applies the same concepts that you learn in cascading style sheets. You guys remember the, uh, the concepts in, 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 in cascading style sheets? What does pound mean? the name of the tag, the ID of the tag. So if there's a tag with an ID equals whatever, pound whatever is the style for it. What is the rule for the dot? In cascading star sheet. What is a dot? A class. If there is a tag that has class equals menu or whatever, then there's going to be a cascading style sheet that says dot menu, and this is the style. Okay? So all the tags that have class equals menu will take that style. So there's the pound, there's the dot. And do you guys remember in cascading style sheet the really cool thing about indicating specific tags? I want a line item under a, an ordered list under a div with pound whatever name. And that style will only apply to a line item under an, an ordered list under a div whatever whatever. And you just put everything separated by spaces, right? And the style. And only those tags that comply with that rule will get applied that style. Guess what? JavaScript is um, jQuery is the same thing. jQuery, you're going to be able to reuse the cascading style sheet rules that you learn already for JavaScript. So you don't have to do stuff like document, get me an element by ID, whose ID is, and you pass as a parameter the name of the ID in double in doubles quotes, and then dot value assign that's just too much code okay you're gonna be able to do it as simple as dollar sign so here it is this is the simple of all the JavaScript that you can get you wanna try yourself this is the code so everybody identifies this right this is an HTML page inside the header there's a scripting and what is the script the script is just this semi JavaScript is not really totally JavaScript, right? And then the end of this, the end of the script, and then the end of the header, and then here comes the body. And the body has what? Three paragraphs. That's it. Paragraph one says, "If you click on me, I will disappear." Second paragraph says, "Click me away," and third paragraph says, "Click me too." End of the body. End of the HTML. So how on earth is this little script able to do something like this? Really cool stuff. It's like, whoa, I like that. How do you do that? Okay. What happened to my... Okay. So this is the code that does that. So let's try to interpret what this code is doing. Basically, there is more there's no more document dot get me an element by ID with parameter or whatever. You don't have to do that anymore. You just say dollar sign and you put between open and close parentheses the name of the tag or the tag itself. Okay? In this case dollar sign document refers to the document itself. Then you put dot whatever event you want happening or you want a capture of that 
tag or element. In this case, ready. So basically you're saying when the document is ready, then you pass a parameter. And this is the parameter. Okay? All that stuff that I'm highlighting is the parameter. Can you guys tell me what is the parameter? A function. Oh boy. This is what is really cool about JavaScript. In JavaScript you can pass as a parameter a number, a string, a boolean, or more code. Which is like, wait a minute, more code as a parameter? Yes, and that's what sometimes also makes JavaScript such a headache. Because you can actually tell a function to execute something, and you pass the code that you want to execute with that something. Okay, And that's, this is the perfect example. You're passing as a parameter to the ready function of the document a function. And what is the name of the function? Nameless. No. But when you want to name a function in JavaScript, you say function, name whatever, parentheses, maybe some parameters or no parameters, close parentheses, curly brackets open, my code, curly brackets close. End of the function, right? Well, guess what? In JavaScript, you can pass just code. In other words, you're passing a function that doesn't have a name. You don't care the name. You're just saying, it's going to be a function. Nameless function. So what is this nameless function? Well, if you go into the body of that nameless function, this is what that function is going to do. Whoa. What is that? Dollar sign P. What did I just say about dollar sign? That's how you tell the document to get you an element of ID or of a certain type. In this case, you're telling document, get me all the P's. Go into the body and get me all the P's. All the tags that are P's. Okay? Just that dollar sign and P with du within double quotes does that. And then what do you do with that? You say, hey, P, I want you to have a click event. And when somebody clicks on you, I'm going to pass you a parameter. Guess what the parameter is? Another nameless function. So here is the parameter. This is the parameter. So the parameter is another name nameless function. And what is the body of the function? This is the body of the function. OK, so I'm getting all the P's. And when somebody clicks on any one of them, I want to execute that. What is that? dollar sign this. Do we have a tag called this? No, we don't. So what does this mean? The P, what you just clicked on. The P that you just clicked on, and it could be the first, the middle, the last one, doesn't matter to me. This is the P tag that you just clicked on. And the way you refer to it is dollar sign this. So dollar sign this hide that's it that's all it takes in jQuery to do something as cool as this aha uh -huh. so you're saying okay so we are including in the script jQuery this is jQuery syntax. How does my page get to know how to interpret that jQuery? There it is. 
because you are embedding in your HTML another script which is the JS the jQuery library now you can do it different ways you can do it the way that I did it in my project the JavaScript library jQuery min okay so I took jQuery min .js from the web downloaded it put it under my JavaScript folder which lives under my web content folder right and then the page that needs to use it the page that has jQuery code like for instance my enter hours use this file okay that's what it's going to allow me to do my scripting in my enterhours.html page in jQuery. Is that the only way? No. There's another way. And that's the way that it's being depicted here. You can say, you know what, I'm not going to download the minimum, the maximum, whatever query from the latest, because it's always changing, 1.10, 2. whatever. I'm just going to let the page to go on the internet, look for an institution that keeps track of all these different jQueries, and in this case, guess who's that institution? Google! Ajax.googleapis.com Okay, they keep track of different versions of jQuery. So you just put as a source, not a file, but a URL. Is that the only one? No, there are several of them. There are several institutions. So you just pick the one that you want. Okay? So when you hit this page, it will actually go to that URL and download the jQuery for you, the jQuery library. That is if you don't have already downloaded it. If you have already downloaded it because you were in some other page that required it, your that library will be cached, will be on temporary files or will be cached on your on your browser. So you don't have to download it anymore. Okay? Any questions? Okay. <coughs> so, in order to understand jQuery, you guys must already know HTML, cascading style sheets, and JavaScript. Do you know that stuff? You better. So, what does that mean? That jQuery is a lightweight, write less, write less code. It's always about writing less. I hate writing by the way okay I hate typing the more I can get off with less typing the better so jQuery is a really good library for me the purpose of jQuery is to make it as much easier to use JavaScript on your website now since you already have the concept of HTML and cascading style sheets jQuery tries to apply those concepts using JavaScript. So this is how you get to do it. So you can either include the JS like I just said or you can include a URL to get it from. It's up to you. But this is exactly what jQuery does. Okay? The basic syntax, and you guys already saw that from this first example that I show you, is dollar sign and then a selector. Okay? Dollar sign and then a selector. Now, the selector can be what? A tag. It could be a, uh, uh, all the tags of a specific kind. Or maybe a tag with an ID. Or a tag with a class. Some kind of selector. Okay? And remember, cascading style sheets taught you how to do selection of tags 
in order to apply styles to it. Okay? And then a dot action. Hide, show, uh, whatever. There's going to be action shit that you do to those tags that you selected. Okay? With optional parameters. So a uh, dollar sign sign to define the access jQuery, a selector to query or find the HTML elements, and a jQuery action to be performed on the elements. So this is an example. Dollar sign this, hide. It hides the current element. Dollar sign P, hide. It hides all the P elements. Okay? Dollar sign dot test. Dollar sign dot test. It hides all the elements with class test. What about pound? Dollar sign pound test. It hides the element with ID test. Okay? Now, typically you put all those functions within a dollar sign document ready. What's the reason? Because you don't want your jQuery code to be executing when the page has not been loaded fully. Why? Because your code might be addressing selecting or doing something to a tag that hasn't been loaded yet. So it only makes sense to execute the jQuery when your document is ready. In other words, when the entire images, styles, and everything that make up the web page is loaded. That's when it's ready. Okay? You won't do it until the entire page is loaded. Yes. That's if you put it between document ready. You might be able to do it outside the document ready, but then it's a r at your risk. Okay? So there's plenty of examples using the, the pound ID selector, put using the dot class selector, you know, and there is the really cool thing about these selectors is that it's it's very comprehensive. Okay? It actually it goes beyond this cascading style sheet selection. So just to give you an example, star means all the elements. Kind of, right? Makes sense. What about P dot intro? What does P dot intro tell you? P is what? A, a tag, paragraph tag, right? But you don't want all of them. You just want the ones that have class intro. So you say P dot intro. Remember the dot means class. Or what about this one? P colon first. Colon is very important because colon gives you actually a sequence of which one you really want. Do you want the first? Do you want the last? I don't want all of them. I want P colon first. That means I only want the first paragraph. Okay? What about this one? This is pretty cool. Go out there, pick the first unordered list, and of that, Pick the first line item. You are being specific of what tag you want in your document. Okay? And I hope you guys watch my video lecture on the DOM, the document object model. Because if if you guys haven't watched and you don't know what I'm talking about about the DOM, this is Chinese for you. Okay? You should already know what the document object model looks like. What about this one? This is really cool. Look at this. Pick all the ULs, right? And then once you pick all the ULs, pick only the first line item in each UL. That's what LI 
colon first child means which is different than li first remember what about this one select all the tags whose attribute that's what the square bracket means an attribute so pick all the tags in my document that have an href attribute that's pretty cool that's pretty powerful okay you guys remember what tags have an href what what tags have an href an anchor exactly what about this one look this one is select all the anchor elements right here that's what you're saying select all the A's all the anchor elements right with a target attribute value equal to underscore blank so it's gonna go and pick all the anchors in your document all the links and then it's gonna give you only the ones that have a target equal underscore blank can anybody tell me what that means what's an anchor that has an attribute of underscore blank what does it do it creates a new window so when you have a link that has target equals underscore blank. Have you noticed that when you go to some websites, you click and then a new window, a new tab in your browser opens up and it keeps the one that you came from? That's what the anchor does. An anchor that has a target equal underscore blank means I want you to get to me on this anchor on a new page, on a new... Well, back then, in the old... In the 1990s, it was a brand new browser. You would actually load the entire browser with that page. Nowadays, it's tabs, right? Just an additional tab. What about this one? You guys remember the exclamation point equal? What does that stand for? Not equal, right? It's C, it's Java, it's JavaScript. Selects all the anchor elements with a target attribute not equal to dot underscore blank. So same as you have the equal, you have the not equal. What about the column button? Remember we said what about the column is a special attribute value, right? Column, whatever, it means a value of an attribute. What are you doing here? You're selecting all the buttons, elements, and input elements, especially the input elements, right? With a type equals button value. So button is the value that you're looking for. And same this one. Select all the table rows that are even. And in this one, select all the table rows that are odd. In other words, jQuery is going to be a simplified way of you selecting specific tags in your document so you can do something to them. That's all it's about, really. That's all it's about. Because remember, your code is actually executing on your browser. All this code has downloaded down to your browser just like the images, like the just, just like the cascading style sheets, just like the HTML stuff, and it's executing on the browser. That's what makes it look like it's dynamic, you know, like it's a standalone application. But in reality it's a web application. The ones in W3 school allow you to play with them, which is what is really cool. Did anybody have a chance to watch my uh, Raspberry Pi video lectures? That's another option. If you don't want to do it with W3 schools, Raspberry Pi is another option where you can actually put the HTML, the cascading style sheet, the JavaScript, and execute it. Try it. Try it yourself. Right there. 
Okay. Look at all the events. All the events that you can capture from the, your element tags. When a tag gets clicked, when a tag gets double clicked, when a tag gets key pressed, when a tag gets gets keyed up, when a tag gets its focus, when a tag loses its focus, also called blur. Okay? You can do code under any one of those events in any tag. You are treating your tags, your HTML tags, like objects. That's what, in essence, what it's going on. And that's what it's really cool because once you have the concept of a tag, not as an HTML tag, but as an object, you can do stuff with them. You can tell it to show, to hide, to jump, to do all kinds of things. That's why you see all these different cool widgets, jQuery widgets, JavaScript menus, all that stuff. All right, enough of that.